the RM Sotheby's auction at the Concours is the Concours own for 18 years. So you've got American Iron, a Japanese 2000 GT from Toyota, a Porsche. You've got a carbon fiber beauty, and then take a look at all the other cars that are sitting just in the Grand Ballroom at the hotel. A Ferrari, some pedal cars, an AC Cobra, and a Gullwing. That first American classic we saw was a 1932 Packard Twin Six Coupe Roadster. Next to it, a beautiful Marmon. Look at the red contrasting stripe. People know Toyotas these days for the Prius and other hybrids. But back in the 60s, they made a world-class supercar, the 2000 GT. If the car looks familiar, take a look at the license plate, then realize that a one-off Cabriolet version was used in one of the Sean Connery 007 movies. Everybody deserves a supercar, and here's a Pagani Huara with 720 horsepower. What's the power plant inside all of this carbon fiber? It is an AMG Mercedes V12. Here's a 1962 Curtis Aguila. Look at the beautiful Italian Testarossa inspired bodywork, but trust me, there's an American mill underneath that body. This may look like a classic 1930s Ford, but actually, Ford's first chief designer, Bob Gregory, designed this custom built car for Edsel Ford, the son of Henry, because Edsel wanted something a little special and a little racy. So you see that, the beautiful bead waterfall grill, the hidden door handles, the tight cockpit with the engine turn dash, and then of course, the piece de resistance, a beautiful boat tail with those flared fenders. The 1932 Ford, basically Edsel Model 18 Speedster, it was a one-off design that uh, eventually made it into production with three cars total. So, not really production, but three special cars. This is the first time this particular car has actually been offered for sale and uh, publicly, and it's, it's a fantastic occasion. What are some of the things you love most about the shape uh, or design? You know, I think it, it incorporates a lot of absolutely spectacular design elements from the waterfall type grill, the boat tail, the fenders, um, the high body work actually is something that I, I, I find particularly interesting on it, uh, the short chassis, everything about it that makes it unique. Uh, eventually you would see some of these other items incorporated on production cars. I think that's what also is quite special about it and the fact that one of only three built. Uh, we've had the pleasure of selling uh, one of them previously uh, when it was owned by Bill Warner, Amelia Island uh, founder, Concord Elegance founder, and, and so that car sort of set the precedent over uh, almost 10 years ago, I think, and uh, first time a car like this has come up for sale since. Some of you may remember Jeremy Clarkson, ex of Top Gear, drove this around the hallways at BBC in England. The cool part about this, this is officially the world's smallest car. And here's a tidbit. The Peel has no reverse gear. You just pick it up and turn it around. Magical names like Roger Penske and Mark Donahue are associated with cars like this 1968 Trans Am Chevy Camaro. Legend said that the bodies were acid dipped and all sorts of race trickery occurred to make these the winning car in the Trans Am series. Big and little exist here. That's a Ferrari Super America, and that's a BMW 328 kitty car. The tail on the top make this Mercedes-Benz very special, and that's special with a Z, correct? That's right, and this is a, this is a uh, Cabriolet A, um, a very unique one, in fact, and it has a different body design, kind of more of a bustle back to it, and you look at it rather than the long tail variant, such as the special roadster that we sold in Arizona this past year. So um, these are obviously amazingly well-built cars, exquisite quality to them. If you get a look at the interior, you'll see the dash, all the mother Pearl, everything about this is, is unique. It truly is a special car uh, and obviously a special cabriolet. You do. This is a supercharged car. Uh, there is a, a great sound to it as you drive, and, and when you get a look at the engine and the engine bay, it's, it's quite impressive. All the stunning stuff isn't just inside. There's an Austin Healey, a beautiful Lincoln Continental. There's an Auburn with a supercharger and a boat tail, and then there's so much more in the RM Sotheby's tent out here in the sun with the flowers. Maseratis, Alfa Romeos, Cadillacs, Porsches, 
all living right next door to America's first front-wheel drive car, the Cord L29. Other classics include this beautiful Delage. Here's a baby Bugatti. The coffin-shaped hood on that Stanley steamer is exactly that, the boiler for the steam engine. This was a classic American car for you and the family, but it was silent except for a slight hiss. The Stanley steamer comes from a day when cars were economical and weren't necessarily gasoline. What no. makes this car so important? Well, what makes this car very special is one, that it's a steam-powered car, and two, that it's a running steam-powered car, which actually makes it even more unique because they are difficult to own and operate, um, very dangerous, in fact, at times because of the boilers, but these are very unique cars in that they hold a special place in the technology, both in brass era cars, but also post-war uh, cars as well. So, you know, this is a great example. Wonderful body on it, touring car, <clears throat> and they're actually quite quick. You can actually really, they've got good acceleration. Um, so, we're, we're delighted to have one. The Ruxton, built in 1932, should have been America's first front wheel drive car, but you know, the Cord L29 beat it. That's just the way the cookie crumbles here, the beautiful seaside location for the RM Sotheby's auction. For Jacksonville.com, I'm Dan Scanlon on Amelia Island. Memories. So the muscle.